Hello, I'm Jeremy, and this is Michael, and we're going to be having a tutoring session about um, animation. So, uh, Michael, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Michael. Um, I am interested in animation, and uh, I'm a web developer, and I just want to learn more. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, M M Michael wanted to learn a lot of things, and animation is <laughs> sort of the first thing that we were uh, planning to go over. And it's something that I, you know, I, I know a decent amount about because I've written various JavaScript libraries. I've given a number of talks about animation. So I don't want to say I'm an expert because I don't like calling myself an expert at things because it feels weird. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I, I'm not a newbie at it. So so, yeah. <laughs> so um, Michael, what, what types of animations have you done on the web, or have you done any? And you know, you, you, you can explain. Uh, just some had. some really basic SVG stuff. Uh, just moving using using JavaScript to move something from one place to another, and not really anything that's heavy. Really, just more so moving moving things that look like moving things around on the web page is basically all that I could, could say I've done in terms of animations. Okay. I mean, I know basic CSS stuff, but nothing like in terms of having like I've, I didn't I definitely don't understand how Bastion was coded on you know an HTML5. I don't understand well. any of the I don't understand any of those animations. Oh, uh, how what was coded though? Oh, oh, Bastion, the Bastion. video game. Oh, I have don't, you ever? I don't it's know. it's really interesting. It's I'll send you a link. <laughs> Fair enough. So I guess like, uh, what what do you what what do you want to get out of this? As in, what do you what are you looking to build specifically? Like, what questions that are unanswered that you want to answer so you can build the thing you want to build? Uh, how, how to use uh, WebGL would be really cool. I would really like to learn how to start using like the basics, like where do I go, like what's what to do with WebGL. What are some like uh, good places? To, I mean, if you don't, if you don't have any specific advice, but like you know, just like the the basics, the foundations, the important things to know about you know coding and doing something, doing making a cool animation in WebGL or OpenGL or something like that. Well, admittedly, um, I haven't used WebGL, so I'm not really uh, an authoritative uh -huh. person on it. Although I do want to learn it because I think that WebGL is the future of the web. I think it's one of the yeah. most important technologies because it's just it's fast because it takes you know advantage of the GPU, which is way faster than the CPU for for rendering things to the screen. Yeah. But animation and, and WebGL are, are, are I think are pretty decoupled concepts. Okay. Um, I, I think that people kind of lump animation in with like being Intrinsically coupled with DOM or Canvas or WebGL or whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. The, the the thing to keep in mind is that you want to separate se separate out these concepts. You kind of want to abstract away this concept of animation and movement, and you want to have and you have this other concept of how something is rendered to the screen. So you've got like a rendering layer and uh, and an animation layer. Okay. And the animation layer can be any number of things. Uh, it could be DOM with CSS. It could be uh, you know SVG. WebGL, uh, and even something that's not necessarily visual. It could be audio or something like that. It's just, it's just a thing that take, that represents data in okay. uh, a meaningful way, usually visually. Okay. Uh, animation is just controlling uh, some data over time. That's really all it is. Okay. So, well, I mentioned I've written some libraries, and I don't want to necessarily um, use those as like the one example of how to do animation is just the way that I've done it so far. Yeah. But um, an easy way to kind of express an animation is kind of like, um, in, uh, well, have you used CSS3 keyframes? Yeah, yeah. Right, so the idea is that you have like certain parts in an animation that, you know, it animates to and then it interpolates everything in the middle. And that's what you really want to have. Um, the idea is to just change it, like figure out where a value starts, where it ends, figure things out in the middle, and then just kind of construct larger animations based on top of that. Uh, so that's keyframing, and then there's also tweening, which is kind of like a simpler version of keyframing, and they're pretty closely related. But it's basically saying, uh, from where you are now, animate to this position at this time. Okay. And then there's a few more uh, things to keep in mind, like like easing. That, that's mainly it, actually. It's just like different easing formulas, um, and that's what. Oh, still there? I think we lost Michael. Um, well, so that was uh, unfortunately Michael. Oh wait, he's coming back. Uh, sorry, I think there's a bit of a hangout issue. Oh, Michael.
Yep. Okay. okay. You, cool. you came back. I didn't, I'm amazed the hangout actually recovered gracefully. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it was pretty nice. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so sorry to the audience about that, but um, yeah, I, M- Michael doesn't have the best connection right now, so we're we're, we're trying to make do with what we can. <laughs> um, such is life. <laughs> yeah, that's just life. <laughs> Uh, but going back to what I was saying, yeah, it's just you starting at any point, or tr- starting at any point, interpolating the points in the middle, and using an easing formula to make it seem more natural because nothing in nature, you know, moves at a linear pace, and that's okay. really, you know, the, the the core mechanic of it. Um, did you want to know about like how animation works, like mechanically in the browser, like how you know motion is created, not just in the JavaScript layer, but just like how it achieves it. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, something outside of the JavaScript layer would be would be more interesting. I mean, I, I mean, I know that. So my understanding of animation now is, uh, I mean, as you saw before, I thought it was. I mean, I understand that CSS. I understand that. I mean, you can do it in CSS. You can do it with JavaScript. You can do it with jQuery libraries or any sort of. I mean, you can move things around, but like, I mean, how do you? Is, there's, I guess there is no real correct way to animate something, right? But like, well, I don't. See- there's no one one size fits all solution. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you want just like a simple animation, for instance, if you want to have, if you want like hover over a button and it like glows or yeah. something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would you want you want to use CSS for that. Um, the rule of thumb I would say is that you want to use CSS for animation as much as possible because that's the best way to take advantage of. Uh, uh, the CPU because the browser cannot start, uh, and maybe the GPU too because the browser can optimize uh, CSS CSS animations in a way that it can't optimize JavaScript animations and I couldn't give you the specifics like at the implementation reasons why but uh, generally speaking um, with the JavaScript animation your 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 client code is just like recomputing the state however many times a second and then playing it, and the browser can't actually optimize for that because it can't, you know, conceptually um, uh, predict what might be happening, so it's just, it's figuring things out many times a second and not really able to optimize that much. Um, okay. It also creates issues with garbage collection. Um, garbage collection is like the bane of a JavaScript developer's life, and it's, it, it's mostly apparent in animations because you can see, like, a jump. Like, if you have something moving linearly across the screen, uh-huh. you see, like, a jump, that it, it's not very smooth. Whereas with the CSS animation, because it's optimized, it's not garbage collected, it's, uh, it's usually just completely silky smooth throughout the entire animation. Oh, okay, yeah, so I, I, made, a, I made a carousel. Uh, from scratch, just to, you know, to, to get used to like jQuery JavaScript and moving stuff on the screen, mm-hmm. and so that's probably what was happening because I was getting really choppy at certain points. And it was probably oh no, we lost Michael again. This uh, this hangout might not work, um, but if anybody's watching, uh, yeah. Oh wait, it's coming back now. Uh, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> okay, technical difficulties today. Um, yeah. Let's finish for a few more minutes. I'm not sure if this is gonna necessarily work out for our session because it's a little bit hard to deal with with a with a yeah. slow internet connection. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so yeah, that there will be some jitteriness with a JavaScript JavaScript animation. There's like yeah. crazy hacks you can do with your code to minimize garbage collection, but I'm I'm not sure if you can get rid of it entirely. Like you can pool memory, kind of like uh, how game developers do. It. Game developers do it so there's not a garbage collection, um, and there's certain operations you can perform. But that's not a super practical way of writing okay. code unless you really okay. have to. But generally speaking, yeah, you want to use CSS so you don't have garbage collection, and it, it, it's it's just more optimized for the browser. Uh, but CSS kind of falls apart when you need to control an, an animation or if there's any kind of logic associated with an animation. Okay, if you yeah. Control the timeline of it. Uh, you really can't do that with CSS. There yeah. are maybe ways, and I'm kind of I'm going to start exploring ways to see if that's possible, but uh, it's not really practical today with the tools that we have. Yeah. Uh, I imagine there will be libraries and tools in the future that will make it easier or maybe even a step yeah. for it, but right now... If you if you're looking to add like logic and behavior in your animations, 
uh, CSS is only gonna, only going to get you so far. Yeah. So if I want to take a really simple like in like uh, in browser game, mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't. I mean, obviously, wouldn't want to use CSS. But where do where do I draw the line between using a JavaScript library and using something really powerful like WebGL? Or I mean, I know you don't know much about WebGL, but like, why would why would I not want to use WebGL and use something use some sort of library for animation? Well, I think you would want to use WebGL if you're building a game. I think that you'd. I mean, I, I, it's even though it can be hard to use from what I, from what I can gather. I think that um, the performance gains from using WebGL are, are worth the complexity of bringing it into your project. I think we lost Michael again, but I'll just kind of explain it anyways. Um, WebGL is, is is just a faster way to render things, and like I was saying before, uh, if you can decouple things. Um, Michael, I was just kind of explaining. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to uh, decouple your animation from from your logic, then it won't really matter how you render things. Okay. So you want to use WebGL and CSS as much as possible. Fall back to a JavaScript animation when necessary when you need to like build in some logic. Uh, but I'm not sure if that totally makes sense. I might be repeating myself, but um, <laughs> uh, you. You would want to use WebGL if possible. You'd, you'd want to use some sort of library such as 3JS, and I think there's a few others. Um, personally, I like you know going with whatever's popular for you know for community support reasons. Um, but in any case, the way you, you'd want to structure your application so that the rendering logic is this encapsulated thing that could be swapped out at any time. Okay. So, so there'd be a the logic, so there's two parts of animation. I'm just going to reiterate what I, what I understand. Um, mm-hmm. So there's two parts of, the, of, of an animation. There's the, the actual animation part for moving, moving, moving through time, data moving through time, and then there's the logic behind it, so when that data moves through time or how that data moves through time. Is that, is that a correct? Sort of. Um, I mean, there's a couple ways to think about it. Uh, you have something that could compute state based uh-huh. on when the animation began. And then you could have, well, actually take that back. Um, you could, I mean, I, I'm not totally sure if trying to divvy up how the state and logic side of things works. Uh-huh. It, it might be overcomplicating things for certain animations. But what you want to do is have basically two steps. Some black box step that computes what something should look like for the current point in time, like where it should be, if it should be rotated, what the behavior should be, just like the, 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 the rules for that logic depend entirely on your application or your game. Uh, and then once all of the, 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 the state is computed, then you pass that state off to you know, your rendering pipeline, whether that's WebGL or JavaScript or CSS. Uh, with CSS, it, it, it kind of depends because with WebGL and with with, with, if you're doing something on uh, in Canvas, then you can just like give the state and it renders it. But with CSS, it's basically um, with, 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 like a CSS transition or CSS keyframes. You have to compute the entire state and then pass it off onto um, onto the rendering pipeline or whatever you have. And it looks like um, Michael again. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the in the session a little bit early, so hope people found that useful. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, and I'm sure we will <laughs> have to try this again sometime soon. So um, I guess I'll see you all in the future. Thanks.